This office is currently on trial downtown in Baltimore. Uh, listen to the story I'm going to tell you next. You won't believe it. Uh, how you doing, uh, folks? This is uh, Mike McCormick with Advanced Criminology here in Owings Mills. Uh, today is January 31st, 2018. And uh, I tell you, you know, the, the stories never stop in this uh, gun trace task force uh, trial now going on downtown in Baltimore at the federal courthouse. You know, um, I think I've told you several times in other videos how when police get indicted, they start spilling the beans on each other and telling all the little dirty, dirty secrets that they were doing, you know, while they were wearing a badge. And this is just another case where, you know, we're starting to learn more about some of the different co-defendants in this particular case. So I will tell you uh, uh, right now, um, a Detective Jamel Raham has been uh, on the uh, stand uh, so far this week and uh, it seems that most of the testimony that he's given surrounds the conduct of co-defendant uh, Mamadou Gondo who was a uh, Baltimore City police officer uh, back in uh, 2006 I mean you know, when he came on the police on the police force uh, as, as a her first year rookie um, and the story goes is this is uh, his co-defendant Raham is 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 basically saying that prior to uh, them even getting involved with one another in terms of some of the corruption and, and things and misconduct that they're currently charged with at the federal level, uh, there were discussions between um, Detective Raham and uh, Detective Gondo, where Gondo just basically told Raham, "Look, you know, prior to me getting on the police department, you know, I was involved in drug dealing. You know, I killed somebody." I mean, he just laid it all out in this particular federal uh, trial. I can't believe this. You know, things have changed a whole lot since I was on the police department. And this is just unbelievable. Uh, uh, because at some point, you know, you often wonder um, just what is, who are the gatekeepers uh, at the police department in human resources? I mean, at some point, you know, you, you got to do background checks on these people. You just can't uh, uh, put people on the police department because you got to fill a quota. There's got to be some measure of investigation, background investigation, where, you know, you got to look into a kid's high school, and particularly if when you bring somebody on in the police department that's 18, 19, 21 years old, one of the first places you have to start is the neighborhood they grew up in, and you have to go to the schools and talk to the folks in the school. I will tell you a lot of this stuff that this young man has been charged with, and this young man has been, you know, accused of doing prior to him coming on the police department, is stuff that, you know, I could have found that stuff out. Uh, you just talk to the folks in the neighborhood. You talk to who his friends are. You know, they'll tell you, you know, whether or not, you know, he's got a good character or not. They'll, people will just tell you, you know. And so, I, you know, I don't, I, actually, I'm not surprised. I, I say I was, but really, I'm not surprised. Because, you know, it happens nationwide where you have a lot of human resources departments and, and police departments that kind of like, you know, because they need to fill quotas, they, you know, they give a lot of young men and women the benefit of doubt in certain situations when they're talking to them. You know, just because a person doesn't have a criminal record uh, as, as a juvenile or whatever, doesn't mean that that person can work on the police department. And you got to do a thorough background check. You know, here it is. And, 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 and what you didn't know, folks who follow uh, the criminal justice issues, particularly in Baltimore with the gun squad, is that this particular guy was basically... An assassination attempt was on his life back in December of 2006. He got off work, uh, came back to his residence uh, in the 5700 block of Alameda uh, when he got off work and shift. <coughs> pardon me. <coughs> and um, so he was shot at and he was hit, you know, a few times. He was taken to shock trauma where he survived his injuries. Uh, so, you know, this happened two months after he became a police officer. So. You, you, you just understand the concept here. You become a cop. You have certainly questionable affiliations before you become a police officer. Uh, you have uh, uh, that kind of behavior where it's, it's a questionable several red flag type behavior. And two months after you graduate the academy, you are gunned down or an attempt to gun you down and kill you is committed in front of your own home two months after you become a cop. So the question becomes, okay, you just became a cop, fresh on the street, two months, criminals don't even know you. 
you have two months on the street. You're fresh meat, so to speak. They, nobody knows you. The officers, in the, 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 even on the police department where you work at, they very have few words to say to you because you're a rookie. You know, you got to prove yourself. So how does this kid have all this turmoil going on in the, in the background prior to him getting on the police department? And two months later, he's uh, uh, shot at and hit and almost, you know, dies to his wounds and, and shock trauma. And so, you know, this is ridiculous. This story just unfolds and unfolds and unfolds right now going on this week in the uh, United States courthouse downtown in Baltimore. Uh, unbelievable. I've never heard of some stuff like this, but it, the story just keeps going on and on and on. Uh, and then the kid, uh, according to the, the co-defendant, uh, that he admitted, admittedly, like just regular conversation that he's up, he's pr he killed somebody prior to coming on the police department. Really? So this is what you have. Uh, it's just unbelievable that, you know, you have this type of stuff going on and the police department, the human resources department, is just being lax uh, with a lot of things that they're doing, allowing certain folks to come on this department already a propensity towards criminality. OK, and and this guy, you know, he, 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 he gets shot and quite naturally goes through the protocol and uh, decides to stay in the apartment. Now, he could have left, but he stayed after he got shot. But let me ask you this. This is the question I need to know of Officer Gondo. If you got shot and you knew the people who shot you, why didn't you say something then? And so this is what I'm talking about. And so his behavior after he reaches the gun trace task force has already been formed on, his, on the police department. So the police department is not even aware at this point that this kid has a, I'm talking about a background that, that continues from prior to his employment while he's employed on the police department, okay? So when we get to this point where he's indicted on drugs, guns, money theft, it all makes sense because there was the, the flags of, of, of criminality back then. And it just followed him throughout the police department. And then this was a perfect mix for him and several other officers to get together uh, to commit criminality on the citizens of Baltimore. And so when you look at the indictment, you will see that he is named in that indictment probably more than a lot of the other officers. So he came to that particular squad already prime to do the things that he did. So I just thought I'd bring that out today uh, in this particular uh, video because, you know, this story is just uh, unbelievable. It's just it's just unfolding and unfolding more and more and more. And I will tell you, someone in the police department at this point needs to go back from the time that this kid was hired. Go back, talk to folks in that neighborhood, talk to folks at Northern High School to find out what kind of kid this was, to find out uh, um, what was his activities, if anyone knew about his behavior, you know, um, who knows? So I just wanted to bring that out um, to you in this particular video. Um, there isn't anything I want to add to this, but just to say that, that, that there's got to be a form of checks and balances somewhere in the Baltimore City Police Department. Uh, when it comes to hiring folks, no matter where they're from. Because this situation here, I'm sure, had a thorough investigation been done back in 2005 or 2006 when he was going through the process, probably would have uncovered, uncovered some of this type of behavior. With that, I'm going to leave it. My name is Mike McCormick. I'm here at Advanced Criminology in Owings Mills. On this particular video, I want your thoughts because this, this story has got some legs to it. And uh, if we can get more information, we'll certainly update you as we go along. Once again, thank you.